Alrighty, folks. Hello and welcome to something a little bit different today. Um, not doing a race video, which is what most of the people watching this channel know me from. We're going to do a little bit of a uh, race preview video. It's uh, Daytona 500 morning. And, uh, you know, if you're a NASCAR fan like me, really excited about it. I got my Bubba Wallace shirt on, repping my driver. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what I'm expecting to look for and what to watch for uh, during today's race. Uh, if you guys have watched the clash or the duels, what we've seen out of this current package has been a lot of just single file line up the high line, which, uh, you know, it did, I've cr criticized it. And a lot of the, uh, a lot of you guys have uh, criticized this as just being really boring and stale. Uh, largely, I agree with that sentiment, but I want to talk a little bit about what we're gonna, what we might see, hopefully today with this race. Uh, I, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of NASCAR, historic NASCAR. I grew up uh, as a NASCAR fan, watching races throughout. And what I, what I've noticed, going back, I, I, I it's a tradition of mine that I'll go back and I'll rewatch old Daytona 500s. Uh, just to kind of ramp myself up and get uh, ready for the big race and the start of the new season. So over the past week, I've rewatched the 1993 Daytona 500, 94, 95, 96, 97. And the thing that I noticed about a lot of those, like particularly 93 and 97, which are iconic uh, Daytona 500s, those were a lot of single file running very difficult to pass the leader was very much in control now the one thing that was different about those is that it wasn't single file up high or single file down low it was traditional racing line because those cars even though you could go full throttle around it and run in the draft they were a little bit ill handling so that you actually had to run the racing line was the fastest line around the track so I don't know if we're going to see that today. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like they're stuck up at the top. But what I will say is single file is not necessarily going to be a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing if it's difficult for drivers to make passes because it allows and creates opportunities for the drivers who are really good to showcase their talents and figure out and, and, and solve the puzzle, figure out the Rubik's Cube in the car and try to figure out how to make passes. One of the things that I've noticed running two NIS Daytona 500s this week on iRacing is, and it is a bit of a crit criticism myself, I'm going to try to maybe try some new things tonight when I run the NIS Daytona 500 tonight, uh, but I've noticed that the guys who are really aggressive, who don't just sit and ride the way that I've been approaching my Daytona 500s, if you sit and ride, hey, Aggie, how's it going? This is my dog. Hello. Um, if, you, if you don't just sit and ride there, the guys who are really taking an opportunity to try to look for and make opportunities, it can be really frustrating as me as someone who just wants to ride. Well, that's but that's not his objective his objective isn't for me to just sit there and ride and have a comfortable race his objective is to get past me and i've noticed that those guys who are really working and being aggressive do gradually move their way up through the field and i think you could see that today i think you could see really good guys who are really good that are sticker plate who are package and that style of racing who are really aggressive guys who are starting out of the back like brad keselowski and kyle bush i look for those guys to move forward to the front of this field we did see that Chase Elliott in Duel 2, the one that was super boring, making, I think he was in Duel 2, but being able to find ways to pull up, use the side draft to drag a car back and slip up and move up one spot in line. So it's not going to be what we're traditionally used to seeing a lot with restrictor plate lacing where you get two, three lines and they're just going side by side the entire time. It, it, it's not going to, it's not going to be that. I don't want you expecting that because that's not what the race is going to be. What the race could be is a heavy emphasis on strategy and a heavy emphasis on track position, meaning that track position is really important, which is a double-edged sword. 
One is that any track position you gain is super valuable, and the other is that any track position you have is super important to keep. It's really important to be up in the front five or so cars late in the race so that you have an opportunity to be in position to try to make a move to win the Daytona 500, which, if you go back and watch those historically revered, legendary Daytona 500s that we had through the 90s, that's what we had. So what we have today is a potential to have a race that has that type of old school feel where you actually have guys who can get out front, establish a lead, dominate, and then you have other drivers behind them trying to take that away because the lead of the race is going to be super important. So throughout the race, you're going to see guys potentially knowing that the lead of the race is super important and working to get themselves either into the lead or into a position where they can get the lead throughout the race. Uh, you know, look, look for guys to make moves where the, the, the goal isn't to establish a line down low and try to, you know, get a run so that they go from 20th all the way to the front. Instead, look for the guy in 20th to try to work his way to 18th and then 16th and then 14th and, and position by position, move his way up one at a time, one car at a time, kind of like you would do it at another track. So today's Daytona 500 is definitely going to be a different style of Daytona 500 and a different style of restrictor plate racing from what we have done. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, and, and it has been on my mind for a little bit, is the concept of be careful what you wish for. So I hear a lot of fans uh, talk about, well, we just need to open up the rule book. We just need to, we need to pull back. There are too many rules. We just need to pull back rules and open up the rule book. And that's going to automatic, that's just going to make the racing better. Well, if you don't like the style of racing that the restricted plate racing has become, this is 100% a consequence of quote unquote opening up the rule book. In 2018, at the start of the season, one of the rule, one of the myriad of rule changes that they made was that for restrictor plates, they had a ride height requirement at the rear end of the car. They removed that ride height requirement and what has resulted throughout 2018 to get us to where we are today is what happened is a direct consequence of removing that ride height requirement. Not much else has changed about the restrictor plate package, but what has happened is that with the ride height requirement removed, teams relatively quickly, quickly figured out that the cars were just flat out faster if you dropped the rear end ride height all the way to its lowest possible position, dropping the rear spoiler out of the air they could go faster. We saw it kind of hit the culmination of it where the Stuart Haas cars hit on a combination of, hey, if we drop the rear end all the way down, we skew the cars to the right so that, the, the, that it actually pulls out. We, we, we don't get the side force. We actually get rid of the drag that, si that is created, that creates side force. We get rid of that. And then we just work really well together as a group of four. They were able to break away from the pack, something we have not seen at Daytona or Talladega, maybe since the restrictor plates came in. But they figured out the combination. All the other teams saw that, and they are now doing to their cars what the Stuart Haas guys did to their cars, basically. So the reason why I caution against the concept of, well, just pull back rules and stuff like that, most of the rules that are in the rule book, the reason that the rule book has gotten so thick is that teams figured out how to do something, how to gain an advantage by building a car in a certain way. NASCAR decided that they didn't like the style of racing or the type of competition that that particular strategy produced, and so they created a rule to close that option off to teams. So last year we saw NASCAR remove one of those rules. And what you get is you, it's not like you get a whole bunch of teams trying different things with ride heights. We had that maybe at the very start of 2018 with the Daytona 500. And then very quickly a few teams figured out that, hey, you know what? Just dropping it all the way to the ground is faster. Even if it, if you, even if it doesn't handle as well, it's faster. 
and everyone else just copied that. So now we it's we basically still have a ride height rule. The rule, by virtue of being faster, is lower is better. So if the ride height, well, I'm just going to use made up numbers because it doesn't really matter for this point, but if the ride height rule was 5 inches before, the ride height rule now is effectively 0 inches. You can run 5 inches if you want to, you're just going to be last. And so it's no different from if we just had the rule at 0 inches, or we could have had NASCAR not remove that rule, keep the rule in place that they had, and we would still have, we would likely have the cars where they handled well enough that the low line is good, the high line is good, and you could have that two and three wide pack racing that uh, was featured in 2017, 2018, or the 2016, 2017 Daytona 500s. So, you know, it, it's just a cautionary tale of when you're talking about just there are too many rules and just, and just get rid of rules it's not really a good way to do it you need you need to be conscious if you are looking through the rule book and you identify a rule that really does not make a lot of sense and you go back and look at the logic uh, behind why that regulation was put into place why that was put in place and why it still exists today and it really just doesn't make sense then maybe that is a rule that uh, should be reevaluated and potentially removed. And I, I actually do think that NASCAR probably did that with the ride height rule. And it, in my estimation, looks like that was a mistake. But I think that that's the process that they went through because NASCAR is, for all of the criticism that gets levied against them, they're not dumb. The, 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 these are smart people in charge of a wildly successful organization that makes tons of money and attracts huge corporate sponsors. They're not just going like, we have too many rules, we're going to take rule 7, 13, and 23, and we're just going to toss them out because the rule book's too heavy. They're not going to do that. Um, so, but, but, but the point is, is that removing the rule had a consequence, and at the end of the day, it's not like teams are able to get more creative with ride heights they are just all running they're still all running the same ride height it's just they're running the ride height that turned out to be the fastest and now everyone just runs that so i did want to make a little point on that i'm going to close out this video if you guys like this kind of content if you want me to do more videos of this style please click that like button let me know in the comments if you have questions let me know i tend to be pretty active at the size that I'm at currently, and I don't know if it's going to be sustainable if I continue to grow, but the size that I'm at currently, I tend to be pretty active and engage with the comments. So if you have questions, if you have thoughts about what I've said, please go ahead and put that down in the comments below. Also in the comments below, you can find links to my Twitch channel, my Twitter, and my uh, merchandise for, for my channel, because my, what I my main thing that I do is not... NASCAR preview videos. The main thing that I do is I stream iRacing, NASCAR style iRacing primarily on Twitch. So you can follow me at twitch.tv slash John underscore or A underscore Theodore. I will be running the NIS Fix Daytona 500 tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, yeah, so you can see me do that. But uh, again, if you like this kind of content, click that like button, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell. Head over to Twitch and follow me there, and I'll see you guys later. Enjoy the race. Thank you very much. Peace out.